Hi, this is Dr. Naidu. I wanted to talk today again about the tuberous breast deformity because I've received so many questions about this. And as I mentioned in a previous vi video, I used the Grillo system, which was developed by Dr. Grillo, located in Toulouse, France in 1999. And he developed a system to grade the tuberous breast. And depend depending on the severity, this determines how we actually perform treatment. So this is a type one deformity, and as you'll notice, the breast has grown into the lateral part or the part towards the arm, but there's a defect right here in the medial aspect of the breast. So this is what we term the type one deformity where only the lower medial quadrant is deficient. The breast has grown over here. There's an enlarged areola. That's a pigmented part around the nipple, but there's not enough tissue over here, which gives it this sort of tuberous or lopsided shape to the breast. So this has a typical appearance of this kind of italic, loose, you know, kind of lazy S. And so it's relatively straightforward to recognize for that reason. So when treating these type of breasts um, with this type one Grillo, it depends on how large the breast and is and what the patient's goals are in terms of how I'm going to correct it. If the patient comes to me and they merely want the tissue to be lifted, then we can do a breast lift, which involves making an incision around the areola, reducing it, and then bringing the breast up and bringing the tissue in the lateral edge over a little bit medially. So that means bringing it over towards the midline of the chest. In many cases, the patient will want a little bit more volume, in which case we can put an implant in. And while we're doing that, we're going to lower some of the tissue down here so that the implant sits more centrally behind the areola. We reduce the areola at the same time to give a more aesthetic shape and appearance to the breast. So that's really what we do for the type one Grillo deformity. And in the next few videos, I'll describe the type two and type three deformities.